Hi everyone, I'm Sasan Kesravi with Proteus Debate Academy. We're back with another debate analysis video, this one by request. Uh, I actually started recording this July 5th, it's the 12th right now, and uh, recorded for like two hours and then found out I never hit record. And that was uh, the worst experience of my life. Um, but you know, coming back to record, the good news is it was what, a week ago, so uh, I don't really remember this debate um, so well, so uh, I'm sure I'll remember a lot as I'm watching, but um, I'll try to focus on good analysis, we'll try to get all the way through. Uh, another thing is that the video output's been slow because Paul is at a camp right now, I'm leaving for a camp on Sunday, uh, so it's just busy but the good news is that um, afterwards we should have good ideas for videos to make because a lot of these topics will be fresh in our minds we're coming out with a topic analysis video soon I'm pretty sure on the um, September topics for public forum and I also want to I have a lot of other ideas of stuff we want to do we want to do interviews with people uh, no promises yet, but believe it or not, we, like, know Robert Chen. Like, the Robert Chen, which is hilarious. Uh, but we'll see if he's willing to make a video with us. I don't know. Um, so we're back. Uh, Altamont CZ versus Corona Del Sol. If I remember, I had it spoiled for me in the description uh, that one side wins 2-1. But I don't know in public forum like who knows which team is going first and blah 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 so I don't know which team is gonna win this debate um, but I do know that it's a 2-1 which is a little bit of a spoiler uh, but let's get into it Credit against Gonzalo, Spain should grant Catalonia's independence. Our first contention is combating terror. Currently, Stefani Mueller of DW finds in August 2017 that Spain has had an extremely successful counter terror unit and has historically worked together. So, I think probably in the first video, I would have paused as soon as they said terror um, and given some thoughts there. So, it's a Catalonian independence topic. I think the terror argument here is just okay. I think I get where they're going with this in terms of impact. That seems like a really high impact thing. But there's a few issues at play here. The first is that terror just doesn't have as big an impact as you think it does. For several reasons. Um, the first is that, at least in the West, which I would include Spain... Uh, in terror attacks don't kill that many people I mean it's tragic and it's horrible when it happens but and I mean and there's ways of framing it which we'll talk about when he gets into his impact framing which will try to make it sound like a more significant issue than it is but how many people die from poverty related issues in the United States or drunk driving or you know like choking on muffins every year compared to, you know, terror attacks, even counting 9-11, what? Well, 3,000 died in 9-11, and since then, maybe 100 people have died in terror attacks, if that. You know, with the Orlando club shooting and the Boston Marathon bombing and uh, the San Bernardino stuff, You know, it just doesn't really approach a number that is significant compared to other systemic or even other world conflict type stuff. It just sounds scary. But I think as a nation, we're at the point where we're uh, ready to be not scared by it anymore. So the rhetoric just isn't as effective as it was, you know, 15 years ago. Um with that said, the other problem is, in a better <laughs> formatted debate, uh, the terror, 
it's a, like it's terror talks, right? So using terror threat as a reason to take you know like significant action, especially in like having conflict in the Middle East, opens you up to a lot of counter argumentation that says you are constructing threats where there are none, which is bad. Um, and generally speaking, you don't want to open yourself up to those arguments unless you have really good answers. Um, so those are the first two things. The third thing is that it's hard to ever resolve terror, right? Like, terror attacks happen. Like, I would consider the Las Vegas attack like a terror attack. Like how, but you don't resolve that the same way you resolve, like the measures to combat terrorism in the Middle East didn't make us safer from things like the Las Vegas shooting. Uh, similarly, like if a huge portion of trying to predict what people will do which is not a good way of making arguments, in my opinion, and we I talk about that in another video. Um, a huge part of trying to predict what an agent will do is means, motive, and opportunity, right? And with Terra, you're never really going to fully remove the means or the motive or the opportunity. So to predict that you somehow resolve for terror attacks is a really big bill. So we're going to talk about how those things affect this argument, but those are the major concerns I have with terror contentions in general. With Cabin, please do stop terrorism. However, Harvey Gavin, the Express finds in October 2017 that with independence, all Spanish police would leave the region. Indeed, Dorsham. So we're starting with the negative and is really important as we've talked about in I think both of our other analysis videos that the negative must must argue that the status quo is good especially if they are choosing to not do like counter plan blah 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 and I've, we got some comments about that about how that's not really allowed in public forum which we know but there's really no way of stopping someone from being from arguing in defense of an alternative or w that a whole implementation of the resolution would be bad but a partial implementation implementation would be good right like that's not how the real world works in the real world you don't get people saying like i think the best solution is either for everyone to have guns under every circumstances or no one to ever have a gun Right, like usually someone, most people, are advocating for something in the middle, not like proposition and the complete opposite of that proposition. That's sort of the way the show Crossfire worked, which is what Public Forum is based on, and is a large reason why Crossfire got canceled and was highly criticized and embarrassed in its <laughs> in its time. So, um, so with that said, you really wanted to explain why the status quo is good. Now, if memory serves, the negative goes on to not do a good job of that in their next argument. But in this first argument, they start out at least acknowledging um, an attempt to do that. I don't think it works out for them in the long run. But here, what they're doing, and it's important to point out and praise, is arguing that in the status quo, some sort of terror mitigation is working in the status quo where Spain and Catalonia are working together to prevent it. We'll go on and see where this story sort of falls apart, but what they're attempting to do right there is argue that the status quo is good. In theory, that's a great start to this argument of the El National Roberts in 2017 the independently Catalonia lacks sufficient defense forces right now. Paul Matthew Re Rebecca Canero of El Paris further in 2017 that lack of communication between Spanish and Catalan police forces leaves room for attacks similar to the terror attacks earlier this year in Barcelona. The so here the story gets a little bit more confused because you're saying that the Spanish police is doing a good job but a lack of communication between the Catalan and the Spanish police forces is causing a problem. This sort of mitigates your status quo solved story, right? Because what you're saying is don't change anything. 
So you want to defend the status quo where Catalan and Spanish police forces have miscommunications and terror plots can happen? Sounds like the status quo is not resolving for the issue of terror. In addition to that, there's actually an opportunity for a turn here for the affirmative to come in and say the problem you're describing isn't that the Catalan police force is inherently incapable of doing it. Your card is saying that the fact that they have to communicate with the Spanish force is creating miscommunication and miscalculation and whatever and them just being autonomous and being able to do it on their own reduces the possibility of this stuff happening. So already you sort of created some contradictions. This happens when you're sort of just googling every card that seems like they say something regarding this topic but aren't really nailing down a clear story and trying to find things that tell that story clearly the way you want it told. The impact of terror is a hot spot. So, so we just jump straight to the impact, right? Like, there's no... There's a little bit of uniqueness, but there's really no link story, right? They just say, like, the status quo is good, except when it's not, and here's the impact. Like, what happens? You need to talk me through the story of Spain grants Catalonia its independence, and then some shit happens with specificity. Where? Who gets affected? And blah, 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 right? We're just jumping into a hot spot impact. Encouraged by the 2012 that an independent Catalonia would emerge as ground zero on the continent, become one of the top incubators for terrorism in the West. Sounds like you started with that impact. You found that impact, and you're like, great, I have a card that says it would be ground zero for terrorism, so like, let's get a couple uniqueness cards and blah blah blah. It doesn't really work when that, at least, that doesn't work in isolation when that, uh, when you're not using, like, that article sounds like it would be telling the impact, the link story. You're not using it to tell the link story. You just say that it would be ground zero, and now, now I have to look at your card, but, like, you're not reading the warranting that that card gives. Um, and there's other issues with it because you don't explain how the status quo resolves for that. But let's let's go on. Rick Nowak of the Washington Post quantifies in August 2017 that nearly a third of Spanish convicted terror suspects were caught in Catalonia. Seems like there are terror suspects in Catalonia in the status quo, right? Like, you're losing this status quo solve, status quo good story as you go. Our second contention is a setup for failure. Granting independence ensures state failure for four reasons. First is infrastructural barriers. This part of this argument, okay. The second contention is really messy, if I recall. Um, the first reason is because the, you know, the thesis is that it creates state failure. I don't know what that means. We're just sort of getting straight into why it causes state failure without explaining what that concept refers to. The next is that he says for four reasons. And then he just says first is this, next is this, next is that. But you need to label that stuff way better because when I first heard this, I thought that several ideas, which I guess were under the first point, were the four points. And it was really messy to keep track of. And why do you want to list four reasons? In theory, you want to list four reasons because whichever is most mishandled is what you collapse to and say you've conceded this reason it's going to lead to state collapse and thus it will. The way this argument was delivered, I don't think it really accomplishes that. Let's get into it and jog my memory. John Henley of the Garden explains in October 2017 that an independent calendar would need to establish its own central bank, defense force, other, criti other critical infrastructure such as city buildings and transportation, as well as a debt plan and negotiate trade agreements. So you see, those sound like four reasons why it's going to create state failure. Apparently, all of this is under the first reason. So now you have four subpoints, but your first subpoint itself has four subpoints. Really, really messy, especially for a four-minute speech. But in addition to that, well, a four-minute speech there, you're going to get two minutes to extend. But in addition to that, 
What gets mishandled here is you have a piece of evidence setting up four conditions that Catalonia has to meet. Meaning that strategically, you should explain why Catalonia will not meet those four things, the independent bank, the defense force, etc. And then if any one of those get dropped, you now have access to winning. But what we're about to see is that doesn't happen. He says these are the four things that Catalonia needs to be independent. And then we just explain, like, here's why it can't do one of those things. Call automatically jam with the pure of the telegraph explains in October 2017 that Catalonia would be locked out of debt markets and thus forced to default on its debt to Spain, thus crippling its economy. Thus, Liam Whitehurst of INEWS concludes in August, October 2017 that Catalonia cannot afford this basic infrastructure, which is a prerequisite to a functioning nation. Nothing about its defense forces, so like, why even mention it earlier, right? Like, you have four minutes. Don't summarize everything an article says. I, the only thing you needed to read from that card is so-and-so says that without the ability to do this in its economy, it will collapse. And that is a fair reading of that card. Now, that card also lists other reasons why it will collapse. Um, but it's not like your opponent is fishing for more reasons it'll collapse it's not like you're reading a counter plan and saying by doing this we like resolve everything the other side is saying that it won't collapse so it's not like they're going to read through your card and try to like make you look like like use the card against you because there were reasons you didn't mention you're just complicating the story you want a really really simple story um and the only reason you would want to read various ways that Catalonia could collapse is because you have strategies for each of those ways down the line in the debate depending on what happens but if you're not trying to make a multi-prong specific strategy then what you should be trying to do is just tell one really clear story here is the reason why Catalonia would collapse and then try to rely on the strength of your evidence and not, like, the weakness of your opponents to get that across. Because you're going to beat weak opponents anyway, right? If your argument is depending on the other team not being good enough to beat your arguments, then they're worse debaters than you. You would have beat them with any arguments. The point is to write cases that are good enough that a better team that has a bad case will lose to you like you're trying to punch up you're trying to use the strength of your evidence to beat people who are just more skilled than you that's really the approach everyone should take to evidentiary formats of debate where you don't get that opportunity in things like parliamentary debate right like in parliamentary debate if another team is better than you then they'll probably beat you um you know at least seven times out of ten but in an evidentiary format of debate, good teams really have to keep up and make good cases all the time or else a <clears throat> worse team with a great case can catch them slipping, you know? Second is international isolation. See, like, now we're in second. This is why summarizing evidence really sucks. Like, how much of that was in the card? Let's start with the first bit. No country has given support to Catalonia. Okay, but under what circumstances? Catalonia wanted to, well, it wanted to, like, declare independence at this time and just sort of, you know, secede. So, in theory, no country has supported their secession, but the debate isn't about secession, and this becomes really important in the debate later. Now, this was something that I mentioned immediately after hearing it in the first time I made the video, and I was like, what do you, like, is this talking about secession? Is this, what is going on? And it did become a really important issue. So it's not just, you know, the, um advantage of having hindsight that leads me to bringing this up it's a really important issue the negative needs to be clear in your evidence what are they talking about are they talking about like secession or are they talking about independence being willingly granted by spain because 
There's a lot of reasons why countries wouldn't support a secession movement and much fewer reasons why other countries wouldn't support Spain just deciding this place can be independent, right? And there's probably a lot of precedence that demonstrates that. Um, probably not a lot of international support for secessionist movements in California, right? Or like if California wanted to become its own nation or even parts of California wanting to become their own state. But if California were splitting up for whatever reason, there's no reason to think that that would hurt their trade agreements. In addition to that, the problem with summarizing is I don't know whether the analysis at the end where it says thus they would be not allowed to join the EU is in the card or what? Like why would they not be allowed to join the EU? They don't violate any of the like conditions under which you can join the EU. In theory, if these are the impacts you're reading, they would want to resolve those impacts and thus join the EU so they would be motivated to do it. And if Spain grants them their independence, there's no significant reason, at least that you've laid out, you don't tell me what the warrants are in the evidence, why they wouldn't be allowed to do that. So it's just really messy, you know? Um, I would like to see this evidence, but... The other problem with summarizing evidence is by the end of the case, I have like 15 pieces of evidence that I need to see and like, is that during prep time? Is that whatever? So probably a reason why disclosure is good. Why? Okay, so this is another problem with trying to have a contention one and then a contention two with four parts, which is that you're not really doing enough to really tell the whole advantage structure story with any one of those four parts. What this argument would benefit from is some sense of precedence, right? Because a claim is huge. A politically divided government with a far right and a far left is impossible to govern. Why? We see that all over the place. Why would it be impossible? We see that in Spain now. Like, why would it be that way? But also, like, why is the status quo better? We get no sense of that, right? Like, what is working well in the government of Catalonia right now, like I guess it's not collapsed, but how how is this political divide not the status quo for Spain right now, but would be the internal link scenario in Catalonia, but also like what is the precedence for it, all of this stuff, and it just becomes a problem, right? Um, but it, with you know, with public forum, things just get sort of thrown out and then those things get dropped and never challenged because the format's really short and you have a hard time dropping and challenging everything unless you're highly skilled and technical, which I guess, you know, policy or good LD or parley debaters going into public forum would be able to do in theory, be like, here's a problem with this argument and just sort of stack answers to each thing, but if you're coming up in public forum, it's hard to ever reach that level of technicality where you can comfortably find the flaws of an argument really quickly, write down a couple like notes, and then get up and answer the argument. Um, let's move on. Sorry, I just had this panic moment. I have to make sure we're recording because... I can't do this a third time. Great, we're recording.
You have evidence. I don't understand the evidence, but okay. So here it says that there's majority opposition to independence. Um, now, I wasn't coaching. I might have been coaching public forum at this time. I don't really remember doing research on this topic, but I did research it generally because I was coaching college parley. Um, and it's something that, you know, you need to know, needed to, needed to, and still need to know a lot about. And a lot of the evidence indicates that there was not, I mean, whether it's majority opposition or whatever is, you're sort of blipping over that. It's really easy for the other side to have evidence saying the opposite. And which of those is correct? I don't fully remember because it was nuanced, right? There was like one poll taken right at the time where they were starting to, um, you know, they took that referendum and like the conditions under which the referendum was taken was really shoddy. They invited three international bodies to like make sure that the referendum was like democratically sound and not being tampered with. And all three organizations were like, nope, that completely failed any test of soundness. Um, and I don't personally remember whether that was... Um, indicating that people wanted independence but they didn't or the opposite but i'm just saying that if all you're reading about this is like you're just explaining it as the matter of fact thing to set up for what your audience uh, your evidence says then you're leaving yourself really really open to the other side also having a blippy argument that says no they want independence look at this thing and uh just causes a mess That's really misleading because 41% support breaking away, but you're not like that doesn't mean that 59% oppose it. It could be that 20% were undecided. And then it would be like, well, 41%, you know, uh, in favor, 20 undecided, 39% opposed. So that would mean that a majority of people support it. So you you need to be careful how you're reading evidence um, or not misinterpret it intentionally if that's what's happening. I also think that's really like problematic evidence framing when you're like, that's why so-and-so says. Like, is that why that person said it? Do the, does the first bit of research have any impact on the second bit of evidence you're sort of misrepresenting this stuff in a way that would be a problem in any uh better debate format So all of that is to get us to state failure, right? So you have four different paths of leading us there. In theory, like, you don't need that. You just need one solid way of why it would reach state failure. Why do you need four? You can't extend all four. I hope he doesn't try to extend all four later, right? So in theory, you're only extending one. I guess if you're like want to be careful or not really that sure about it, you're like let's have two and then whichever one gets answered most poorly. But four is really not having faith in any one of those bits of evidence trying to get through. Maybe what you're trying to do is give a comprehensive education on the state failure as a concept, but I don't think half of a four-minute speech in a public forum round is the right setting for that.
This is where the distinction between independence being granted and a secession happening becomes really, really important. Because does that evidence that you're talking about with secessionist states take into account like when independence is gra granted? Like, I guess like South Sudan, sure, right? Like Syria, sure. But Canada, Australia, I mean, in India, it didn't really work out well, but like 90% seems really strong. And in any case, you're opening yourself up for this argument that like, no, that's not what your evidence is talking about. When you're just not clear, when you're like secessionist movements, where that's not what the, re that's not what the resolution says. And hopefully by quarters of what I hope is a major tournament, that question should have come up and that argument should be clear like i as the affirmative would very quickly start writing uh blocks that says no your evidence is talking about secession and like you know civil war type stuff where that's not what's happening the resolution clearly makes spain the agent voluntarily giving independence to catalonia it doesn't say catalonia should become independent and thus create some question about how it would happen it just straight up says spain grants them independence and that really affects the framing of your evidence Like, that's the current Catalan crisis. That's not the Catalan situation in the resolution. Right? That's like... That's like having a resolution where it's like the United States should take direct measures to fix the pipes in Ferguson that they haven't taken before and then saying, yeah, you know, like what the... My evidence says that what the United States is doing right now isn't working. Like, I know it's not working. That's why the resolution exists, right? It's changing the status quo. You're reading status quo bad as the neg. Like, doesn't make any sense. Like, we know that's the status quo is bad. That's why the resolution is existent. The negative shouldn't be trying to read status quo bad evidence. I think this is happening also because, like, people aren't thinking of this framing of controlling the uniqueness and... Status quo good when you're next, status quo bad when you're the affirmative, and it just makes for really messy, inconsistent, crap debate. Um, not that these people are untalented or crap, and that would be really harsh if I felt that way. I think these are really talented people who are clearly doing well in a highly populated and competitive debate format. I think the problem is that public forum as an activity sort of treats like strategic thinking in debate as like sunlight to a vampire um and part that's partly because the the event was formed as a rejection of the hyper technical formats of you know policy in Lincoln Douglas and I understand that but that's also what you're giving up like strategic soundness is what's going with it like yes a lot of the issues in public forum in policy and sort of more technical LD are ridiculous and in my opinion harming the activity but they resulted from people focusing on strategy and you have to understand that if your approach is to just outright reject that style of debate, then you're sort of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak. I don't think anyone said that since the 40s, so happy to bring that one back. Sort of just international conflict moving on like no quantification or qualification of why international conflict is the most important 
impact on the round. In fact, like at this point, I would have no clue what the negative wants me to believe is the most important impact in the round and why. That's going to make it really hard for them later to make any one impact the most important impact in the round and the one issue that the judge should be concerned with, which is what you do in debate if you want to avoid split decisions like the 2-1 that this turns into. So, you know, while I think the negative here going first is talented, there's a lot of notes I would give them, and I suppose just did. So what we see here is exactly the problem that we talked about, right? Now the affirmative is talking about stopping secession. This is good because one, it demonstrates that the status quo, it's, so there's three main strategic advantages here, right? You're starting out immediately with saying, look, the status quo is fucked. There is no world in which Spain and Catalonia get along well and things go back to the way they used to be or the way that we wanted them to be. And now we have to make a choice about how to address this issue. That is exactly what the affirmative should be doing here. What it additionally does is that it indicts the negatives evidence that talks about secession because you're talking about secession is inevitable and you're creating the contrast that what we do isn't secession. So now every time the negative has said the word secession in their evidence, which was numerous, is called into question. Is this evidence defending what you're advocating for or what the affirmative is? Is this evidence negating what the affirmative is advocating for? I no longer really believe that. And probably a reason why the negative shouldn't go first in debate. But the third thing it does is it turns most of the negative if it's done right, right? Like, you are the one talking about how secessionist movements are bad. If I can prove that it's inevitable in the status quo, that creates a really good reason why Spain should grant them independence. And since you don't have any evidence saying why granted independence is bad, let's just shrug and hope it works out, you know? Like, that's the best option we have because I'm going to agree with all of your evidence that says that secession movements are really bad. Um, I'm pretty hungry. I'm going to make some corn dogs and uh, I'll be right back. And we're back. Corn dogs are great. Um, I like all foods that are mostly just something to put condiments on. Um, hot sauce, mustard, love it. Again, right? Like, five reasons in one argument so that's probably two minutes long? Like, I guess in, I mean, just, we'll see how well they extend stuff, right? But I'm not happy about it because they, it just, it doesn't let you tell a story. You're telling parts of five different stories. And, Debate really is just storytelling um, when it's done effectively. Our argument sets you up for a lot, right? Because in order for that to be true, we would have to believe that all large states are inherently splintering, which you could argue like, you know, the United States is splintering or whatever, but like, I don't know, is Canada a large state? If I can show you that Canada isn't splintering, would that negate the premise of your argument? Like, you're, you're trying to talk about like a generalized thing theory applied in this specific instance for no reason other than it's a large state and this is a theory. So shouldn't it be negated with the same level of scrutiny? Like if I can show you a large state that isn't uh, 
splintering than that just broad theory without any specific analysis to how Spain is splintering specifically outside of this generalized concept that large state splinter um, would be, you know, negation, refutation, I should say. I'm sort of going to let her go. Okay, um, well, the first thing I would point out about this argument is that while it sounds good, she's saying a lot of evidence real quick, and there's some big words in there, everyone watching this at home ought to know, without having to do a lot of soul-searching, that this argument is objectively false. I mean, look at a map, right? Do you see Catalonia as its own country? This argument is saying that the Catalonian independence movement is inherent, unstoppable, and imminent. Well, it's a few years later, what happened? They tried to ask for independence. Spain said no. All of these radical leaders that she's talking about who are in charge and won't take no for an answer took no for an answer and they chilled out and then nothing happened right um so yeah that's just the you know um advantage of being two three years after this but the important three years two years I don't, i'm not gonna look at a date but the importance beyond that is that we have to look at this piece of evidence or this argument and identify, well, if it was wrong all along, how might we have known it then? Right? Because we know it's objectively untrue, and so all of this evidence must have some sort of flaw. Um, the first problem is that it doesn't have very good precedence. It argues that any group of people who want independence will eventually get it. What's the time frame on that? Because the Kurds don't look any closer to independence than when they started asking for it in the 40s. Um, in addition, it sort of jumps around a lot, right? It's like the Kurdish media is very anti-Spanish and that's what the Kurd, or not, sorry, the the Catalan uh, media is very anti-Spanish and that's what the Catalans trust. Like, what, what, like, what does that mean? Like, what does, what, like, what does in 20, whatever this is, what does the concept of Catalan mean? news media mean right like i live in uh contra costa county in the east bay area I'm not getting my news from the east bay times you know uh i'm not even reading the san francisco chronicle like i'm getting international news from major corporations like what like your evidence tell, says that, and this isn't like some backwoods, like small town. This is major cities like Barcelona with majority non Catalans. In fact, the vast majority of people in Catalonia are not Catalan. So you're telling me the vast majority of non Catalan people in Catalonia believe false claims in Catalan news media because that's what they 
like like it just it just I don't believe your evidence. I don't be, I think you're probably misrepresenting it. Another problem with evidence standards in public forum. No form of mediation will. They found that. They, they looked and they found that nothing will work. What's that author doing now? Are they, are they uh, a pariah in the uh, shit predicting world? No, they probably moved on to predict more shit that isn't going to happen, right? Like, that, there's no accountability for these people who just say, here's what this country will do, right? It's the same with, like, when, when a movie comes out and or a trailer comes out and everyone's like, here's what will be in the movie or games. Here's what this game is going to look like. And then the next bit of information comes out. And then people are like, here's what we know now. And they're never like, here are the ways in which I was wrong and why. So then really all they ever really know is what you know from seeing the trailer. Like, they don't have any greater insight than you would have had that to any degree of accuracy. Weird aside, but okay. So, um, you see the, um, the gentleman on the other side, their faces sort of perk up because what they're thinking is, what does this, how does this interact with our terrorism argument? And it's a fair question and neither side is really addressed. Like, is it a terrorist safe haven now? Is it not a terrorist safe haven, but it could be a terrorist safe haven. What terrorists? Why do they want to be in Spain? What is their motivation? These are things that I would spend a lot more time explaining if you want the judge to vote on this. If you want them to just pick a random argument out of a hat, that's fine. They're going to end up making their decision based on things like delivery and who looked more confident and cross x and well here's just what i think about this issue right but when you focus into a story that has a beginning middle and end you force the judge to be like here is the flaw i find in your argument or here is specifically why i don't think it's not as important as your opponent's argument or they have to vote for it what what these teams are doing by making, you know, 15 arguments, making no real comparison between those arguments, and then having no clear story between them is it's sort of like a mixed bag where each judge can just vote however they want to vote. You're giving them all an excuse to vote however they were going to vote based on issues you can't control. By telling a clear story, by narrowing the focus of the debate, you take control of the debate and you force the judge to have to make a decision on your terms, which is really the point of debate. Like, peacefully agreed upon borders. It's, it's, you're taking these like broad concepts and applying it to this specific scenario without any real analysis of how well it applies and blah, 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 right? And so same stuff. Now we're going into contention to sailing to victory. I hate that name, um, but okay. Three reasons, blah, 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 but great. This argument's talking about these ports. Spain's not going to develop them. Let's get into the evidence. I'd like to look at this evidence, but why would Morocco invade? One. But two, is there land between Spain and Morocco? Why would they need to prioritize land assets over naval assets 
for an invasion from Morocco. So they said that Catalonia wants to expand its ports, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't say that, I'm sure that evidence doesn't talk about, like, how it will uniquely be able to do that as an independent state. It's also from 2017. Really, that's the only piece of evidence they have that tells the whole story. Independent Catalonia ports, tax revenue. That's really the only piece of evidence that tells like a clear story. Increases the GDP by at least two dollars, I'm guessing was misspoken. This is the really messy um, argument, and I thought that the affirmative was well in the lead until they read this argument. None of her evidence talked about miscalculation. She applied miscalculation as a concept to this evidence. What the evidence talked about was having a strong naval presence and increasing response time. Why did she read miscalculation? Well, because it's a trendy debate thing and it avoids the argument that like people wouldn't go to conflict, democracies wouldn't blah blah blah. So you're like miscalculation, they make accidents and that's bad, right? But the problem is that miscalculation happens more when you have more naval presence and faster response time. Slow response time creates better opportunities to catch and avoid mistakes. The entire premise of how miscalculation works is by like a lot of military presence and low response time. So that's a huge turn on your case, right? At least on this argument, right? It probably the biggest argument in the debate is this like miscalculation between Russia and the United States leading to what I'm imagining they're going to argue is nuclear war or a naval whatever, right? Like. You've only increased the probability of this happening, right? The real impact of having a low response time is that Russia can be expansionist or controlling of blah, blah, blah. But, like, why would they do that and why wouldn't NATO stop them? But you've, you've basically just gone in and said that we should – tensions are now higher than ever – so we should just put more stuff in there and reduce response time just to make sure no one does anything rash. Like, you're not de-escalating, which is the solution to miscalc. Okay, now let's look at this cross X, which is where the debate really started leaning one way for me. Um, and talk about some of the... If you've seen the um, effective cross-examination, asking effective questions, I think is what we called it, question, you should have a sense of a few 
principles of cross-examination. The first is you ask questions with an answer in mind, unless you're totally just trying to understand what it is they said, which is the least important reason for asking a question. So if you ask a question without an answer in mind, you're setting yourself up to be basically smacked down by a team with any sort of experience or presence or um, forethought on this topic. The other thing is that you want to set up for your arguments. And in public forum, that's really important because what a lot of public forum teams do is they have the first speaker write the case and the second speaker write the blocks independently, not a lot of work together. So when the in the first cross X, the first speaker starts setting up for what they want to say, really they're setting up for the third speech because they're like, well, here's the things that I would say in response to your argument in the third speech. They have no idea what their partner is going to say and they're not setting any of that stuff up. So they'll spend a lot of time on cross X trying to drill one concept that just is never mentioned by their partner. What is happening here? Is this prep or is this not prep? Stand up and do cross X. Looks like preparing. It drives me crazy when people like prepare without prep. Oh, I'm just doing this thing. Is the thing you're doing preparing? Because that, that counts as prep. That's what that word is short for. People got places to be. Don't use your phone. I mean, I know that's apparently everyone in public forum does it, but quick tip, if you're the first person with a timer, you're going to you're going to be the one reaping all the benefits. Just use a timer. You have a podium, don't use your phone as a timer. Worst way of asking that question. You're just like, hey, can you go strengthen your argument for me? Why would you ask a question like that? What is the flaw you see in this? Is I happen to know that the flaw is that he wants to address why would Morocco want to invade Spain or attack Spain? Why is Spain scared of Morocco, right? But all you're doing is letting her come up and strengthen her arguments on her own ground, like with her own, uh, on her terms is the term I'm looking for. Is it early? Am I tired? Am I hungry? I don't know what's going on. So that's what happens when you ask questions without any sort of idea, right? Like you set yourself, you like, why would Morocco invade them? But then you're like, are they enemies of Spain? Listen, I don't know anything about Morocco and Spain. Maybe the judges don't either. But if I was asked that question, are Morocco and Spain enemies? I'd be like, uh, yes. And how are you going to respond? You don't know what's going on. So yeah, you're going to think you just made some sort of horrible mistake. Maybe he did. Maybe it's obvious to everyone in the world except for me. And the Morocco-Spain conflict is one of the enduring rivalries of all time. But when you ask a question like that, you're just setting yourself up to borrow a fighting game term to get punished, right? Like, look at the way he reacts to that. Dude, the, a, a lot of cross X is about perception about confidence about who looks like they're controlling this he loses that right here he thought he had it when he's like are they why would they be afraid and then immediately he goes it loses a lot of his affect loses a lot of his confidence and that affects the rest of cross x look at his uh reaction
you know, like panic, embarrassment, confusion, looking around, you know, uh, which if you just asked why does Morocco want to invade Spain, doesn't, one, you can't answer that with a, well, yeah, uh, you have to explain the source of this conflict, and then maybe their answer gives you an idea for something you can say, right? But it's really important that you consider how you're asking these questions. NATO concludes that Morocco is an ally that works with... Sounds like evidence. Are you reading evidence in cross -X? Why isn't that in your case or in one of your blocks? Is your partner going to come up and read that card? How do we know NATO concluded that? You see that a lot in public forum. People are just like, well, as the premise for my question, first let me introduce this thing that I hope will be presented as evidence for the rest of the debate. Um, yeah. See, like, you've lost control of this question. There's a lot of fertile ground there for you to make her look bad with her answer. But you've sort of lost footing. You've gave her the upper ground. And, like, you could have been, instead of her saying, uh, yes, they've had problems for a really long time. Uh, when she says, what, did she say ground invasion from Morocco? on their ground sources. She'd be like, is there ground between Spain and Morocco? Then she'd be like, uh, you know, she'd be in that situation. Which, I don't doubt the evidence that says they want ground resources for whatever reason, but getting asked the question, is there land between Spain and Morocco, is a really challenging question to answer with confidence. And it takes uh, a lot of experience to not buckle. That's an effective way of asking a question. That's setting it up. You got the answer you needed. You're like, yup, got it. And What's happening there is you're saying like, well, you're saying they have debt to Spain. We say that they're given independence, so there's no reason for them to have like major conflicts. So they're not blah, 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 blah. Spain's not going to take some sort of rash. Why would they give them independence only to be hostile towards them? Um, yeah, that was, that was well done. See, like, she's like, I don't care. I got what I needed. Sorry to answer your question. Can I ask another one? Yeah, go ahead. Great. You, your second impact is, like, NATO is weak and is weak right now. And you don't chat right through the That's not right. Yeah. Our impact isn't about NATO being weak. They have been. Checking Russian aggression, right? Yes. Okay. But it's not about them being weak. The problem is they don't have a fast enough response time because they don't have for and, and he asks this, and she, like, gets all, um upset by it and is like here's why that's not but okay so uh that's like saying <laughs> that's like saying like uh you know uh a sprinter for the 100 yard dash 100 meter dash like isn't weak he just has a slow response time would a slow response time stop him from winning? Like, that sounds like weakness. Like, what else would that term mean? Like, she starts to, like, get into some specific stuff, right? Like, are they capable of success or are they incapable of success? Now, I'm not sure why he's asking this question. I don't know what this sets him up for very well, but it gets... Okay, so now he he's set up for that, right? So hopefully he has a question to build on that. Can I get a question? Okay. What? That, so that was so like you're like okay, so you say 
NATO is weak. And then she says, yes. You follow that up, right? You don't just be like, so you say NATO is weak. And she says, yes. And you're like, okay, you can have the next question. So when she's like, well, I'm not saying they're weak. I'm saying they have, it's more nuanced than that. They have a slow response time. You should be like, okay, sure. They have a slow response time. Here's my question, right? Like that sounded like a setup for a question without any real question following. That's not a, it's not a question. I don't understand your link there is not a question. Which he says, but then, uh, I, I don't, I, he's already sort of has the under, if he was, if he was winning the cross X and he said, what is your question? Uh, that would look really strong, but he's already sort of flustered, sort of, uh, nervous in the way he chooses to be snarky about it as he says, sort of like backfired a little bit um but yeah <laughs> so like you know it's just like okay well those was the phrase of the question i know i'm not i'm not disagreeing with you i said the exact same thing when she asked that question but you just sort of lost uh lost the crowd at that point already you know so um or you could just be like what would you like me to explain to you? Or just start explaining it. Reiterate your whole argument all over. Take any invitation to be like, sure, let me tell you all about my great argument and just focus on the strongest parts. And then force her to be like, no, 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 here's specifically the thing I have a problem with, right? But like, I think a lot of times debaters will notice someone else makes some sort of mistake and then they'll jump straight to... Uh, telling them they made a mistake rather than taking advantage of the fact that they made a mistake where she has the much better cross x here when she got asked about her argument she was just like sure let me tell you all about my great argument when he gets asked about his argument he's like leaving opportunities like not jumping at the opportunity to be like sure let me tell you all about this great argument you didn't ask anything specific let me just tell you all the stuff i like about it Why did you just say the government's not going to collapse? You read evidence that said the government's going to collapse. And again, the guy on the right here is right, but he's just sort of lost the cross X already. So, and she's sort of handling the cross X much better, but let's hear this. It says they don't have a government. She says... should be like my debate team has a president doesn't mean that my debate team is his own country what do you mean they have a gov how can they have a government they don't have a state but but yeah so or don't pick those battles right like if you're going to pick the battle you need to be going in uh ready to make your opponent look bad, which is your number one goal in cross X. And um, I think the child on the right picked, uh, I call all debaters children. That's not, he looks like a grown ass man. Uh, just tried to pick a very like indirect or passive way of doing that and just wasn't ready for his opponent to be much more aggressive.
and your answer to that question was like, tell me about your argument. And then it was a lot of new analysis, a lot of like the broad stuff. When she got asked, tell me about your argument, she's like, well, what I said was what we say is this. Let me retell you my evidence. Uh, and it makes it sound simpler, more straightforward, more like your like your opponent made a mistake by not understanding it rather than you made a mistake by not properly explaining in the first place, which is why in cross X as often as possible when you ask these questions, you should be saying things you already said because that frames it as like, okay, well, let me say this again slowly for you rather than like, well, I know my argument wasn't very solid, but here's how I'm going to address that. Okay, next set of speakers. This person like didn't know his speech was coming up next. That's me being a grouchy owl of a old man. Small pet peeve, like when people are like time starts now. If you just start talking, they'll start the time. Like, what are you adding by saying time starts now? But okay. Okay, some problems there. The first, on what planet is that an overview? You read three or four pieces of evidence and it was a block to their first contention. You're just reading blocks to contention one. What is the overview? But second, you're reading like a lot of blocks to the secession is not inevitable in the status quo, but we're still not getting into, like, the difference between secession and independence being granted and all of that stuff. We're just sort of throwing the word around a little bit more and making it a little bit more messy. Now, this evidence is pretty solid. Um, it the summaries have warrants and make sense it's not just saying they wouldn't do it, it explains why they wouldn't do it it you know is pretty clear and factually speaking a couple years later like that is what happened they negotiated and they most people didn't want to be independent from spain and they didn't become independent from spain so it's more of the framing right now that is sort of the weakness but let's move on. Bad start if you're saying group them all because what that makes me think is that you have one piece of evidence that just says the session won't happen and what your opponent did is they read arguments for like these are the conditions under which secession is inevitable. And if that happens, then you have you having one piece of evidence that says, nope, Catalonia won't secede, better be really damn good. That's why 
So, yeah, th there's there's problems there. Let's just focus on the last one. They're arguing that, like, the young people will get old and thus the support for independence will die away. You know there will be more young people then also, right? Like, you have a piece of evidence that says... <laughs> that says that the Cata Catalonian independence movement is mostly young people and it's like, wait for them to get old. Okay, sure, but does does that what your evidence says? Does your evidence say if we just wait for them to get old, they'll no longer want it? Um, yeah, so the problem is that you're not really blocking any of the... You're not answering any of their evidence. You're just reading your own evidence, which is, you know, not really refutation. At this point, it's sort of like, as they say, two ships passing in the night, where... If I had my flow, it would be like, great, five reasons why it's going to happen and five completely independent reasons why it's not going to happen. I guess my job at the end of this debate is to compare and contrast all of these various pieces of blipped evidence that I don't have access to and am not allowed to ask to see. So I'm not going to do that um, is what I would do as a judge. Be like, fuck that. Why, 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 this argument right now, if I was judging, is a wash. You say the independence is inevitable. You say it's not inevitable. Unless somebody starts answering why their opponent's arguments are wrong, I'm just going to make my decision based on something else, which right now is looking like the affirmative's contention too, based on the impact. But let's see how that gets answered. We're still here. You're reading contrary evidence, right? You're like twenty, only twenty four percent support it, and then there, well, the evidence. It's just you're not explaining why your two pieces of evidence disagree with each other, and why. I was it your evidence that said only 49% water? It's, it's just, you're throwing a lot of statistics out there, and I'm getting, I'm having a hard time understanding the setup for this story. How many people want independence? I'm getting majority, I'm getting 21%, I'm getting a 49% number, was that the people who oppose it? I don't know. Actually, no, earlier you said that only 41% of people support independence. So how did that number jump here? This is another example of one uh, speaker writes the case, another one writes the uh, blocks, and they just don't match up. Like you need, you're complicating the story. I need a simple story that you can just be like, my partner came up and told you this is the setup. Like this is how many people want independence. border conflict between who you read analysis that was like when borders change that causes conflict but what is the specific analytic you're giving spain is going to grant catalonia its independence and then catalonia is going to be like that's a new line fuck spain like what are we imagining happens here this is a problem with reading super generic blipped arguments with no real analysis how, also, how is that a turn? That's just your argument from earlier and you're outweighing. What turns? How is that a turn? You're saying you're wrong about your uniqueness scenario. The ports are being used or being built. How's that a, is this like one of those public forum things where everyone thinks every like negation is a turn? Nothing turns. You're not saying actually this other thing happens as a result of you doing the plan. Oh, it would be a turn to say independence 
stops the ports from being developed because it takes out all of the Spanish money. That, that would be a turn. But you're not saying that. I mean, maybe he said that. I guess you're saying that, but you want to make that, like, clear because they say Catalonia is going to fund the port. So it's not really, like, the, the outcome is that the port gets funded. Like, you're not making a comparison between how afterwards it'll have less funding. You just say it's going to lose the investment. But it seems like it's going to get done either way, but... Seems mostly like what this argument's doing is just disagreeing with the premise, with the uniqueness. So the argument for why the ports are actually going to do worse is because people don't like to invest in new countries, which, like, one, why, and two, you are the one bringing investors in. That's not a turn. Like, they said that they use their GDP to develop the, develop the ports, right? That's like saying, like, 1930s America, like, no one, America's in the Great Depression. No one's going to invest on um, in America building new roads and bridges. Like, no one needed to. We used our GDP. We did it ourselves, which seems to be what the argument is saying, right? You are the one introducing the premise that investors are the ones that make this happen. aren't addressing the argument that says Spain is concerned about this regardless of whatever is fact or not. And probably another great reason why the F should disclose because then you can look at the evidence and see why it disagrees with your world view. And if the evidence is just wrong, you're not spreading misinformation in what should be an educational activity. Boom. Then they talk about infrastructure. The issue is they say that like they'll get more money so they can pay for infrastructure. The problem is is that like we would contend that a political polarization that's our third warrant ensures that no uh, infrastructure is not going to occur. But then they send the heavy evidence from our first warrant that tells you that infrastructural barriers are insurmountable because of the fact that if you make all these institutions, they don't only fund to do so. Go to their individual impacts. Their first impact is on the economy. The issue with port economy is going to be the Catalan government explains that 43% of the imports in Catalan ports come from China. And the reason that's really important is because Gal like, you are making the debate way too complicated. And that's not an indication that, like, you understand debate more or you're able to deal with more concurrent ideas than I am. But let's stop and think about how many actors the judges now have to balance in their mind, each with their individual motivation, which is, disagreed on by both sides right so each actor has the af version and the neg version we have the catalan people we have the catalonian government we have spain we have the united states we have russia we have morocco we now are in oh we i think i said russia now we're introducing china and there's also the EU, there's investors, um, the terrorists, right? Like, all of these people are, like, concurrently doing something or not doing something, and 
you multiply that by two because there's af and neg versions of each, like you're just making the debate too complex. You're just adding more shit, right? Like instead of explaining why the affirmative is wrong, you're just throwing more shit at the wall and hoping something sticks, right? It's There's no refutation anywhere in this debate so far. No one's been like, here's why your evidence is wrong. They're just like, here's some more claims we're throwing out. Let's just throw more warrants out. Um, not really, you know, what I think debate should be, but I don't, maybe it'll work out for them. I don't expect, but let's see. If you're allies with Spain, why would you oppose them giving, right? Like, again, I don't think the negative is engaging with the distinction between secession and being granted independence. Let's go back. So this was the argument that I said had a massive turn waiting. He reads a turn. Doesn't sound like a turn. Okay, so currently Catalonian taxes are going to the Spanish military. So now Spain, post affirming, is not going to make this money to spend on its military. And then Spain's not going to be able to fund NATO? And that turns the argument. First of all, what part of the argument does that turn? What are you turning? Secondly, is Spain a major funding force for NATO? What does that do? What like what what do you what do you want me to imagine? Like paint the picture. The plan passes. I'm floating on a raft in the Mediterranean. Are there fewer ships? Are there more ships? Like, what happens? You're just, you're just reading evidence and saying turn, right? But, like, what is your argument? That the United States is going to have less of a presence because Spain didn't give money? So now I have to consider, like, well, what's going to hurt the United States' presence more or affect it more? Having these poor, like, are they better off? The, what you're asking me to imagine is imagine that they have a port because you don't want this argument to rely on the previous argument being true, right? Because then why make two? If the last argument was true, then I would just vote on that, right? So every argument needs to assume that I don't believe the other one. So I believe that Catalonia has a port and it works. And that allows NATO to have faster response time. But now... Spain isn't contributing as much money, but is Catalonia contributing money now? Are they in the EU? Or are they in NATO? Like, the negative tells me that half of them want to be in NATO, the other half don't want to be in NATO, which happens. Probably important for you to predict that at the point where you're talking about the implications, the military implications in the region. Or you could just focus more in depth on fewer arguments. And we're just like introducing this balkanization argument at the very end, right? Like. 
Like, you're not explaining anything. You're not telling a story. It needs a beginning, middle, end. You need... I don't know. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot at this point. Um, so what do I think so far? I think that the affirmative is controlling the round. Now, the negative read a lot of reasons why secession is not inevitable, which you and I factually know is the case, right? Because secession didn't happen. But they didn't really engage with the affirmative's evidence that it's inevitable, A, and B, it, they never, they don't argue that the status quo is good. They just don't. So at that point, like, why risk it? You know, like, like, it seems like a lot of what the negative is arguing about is that the bad I don't I don't I don't know. I don't I, I, I it's really hard to narrow down what the story of the negative is, right? Like is the situation there good right now? I don't have a lot of reasons why it is. I have the Spanish government is responsive to terrorism, but I don't really have a whole lot else. I don't have arguments for why their economy is good. I don't have arguments for why they're trade. I get, I get an argument that says that their ports are being invested in, um, but like that's about it, right? So that's what I'm weighing against what the affirmative talks about, right? So the affirmative is going to come up and talk about hopefully. You know, uh, the ability to respond to crises and, I mean, now that you didn't read the turn on uh, miscalculation, you're like, hey, what we do is we stop an all-out international conflict caused by nuclear and naval tensions between the U.S. and Russia, which you've conceded are more dangerous now than they were in, well, more dangerous in the scenario that you've conceded than in the Cold War. You've also conceded that the only way to resolve this is to improve NATO response time. So, all we need to prove is that the effect of not, like even if Spain has less money to contribute, it doesn't negate the benefits of having US naval presence in the ports they're using the catalonian ports whatever i guess they'll come up and they'll explain it but yeah it, it just is um a lot of drops a lot of concessions and that's what happens when instead of actually refuting evidence you just come up and read evidence that says the opposite all the affirmative really needs to come up and do is just make extensions things that never got responded to and at the point where the negative gives no reason why the status quo is good, even if their blocks or whatever are true, you're like, yeah, there's a chance that we're not, there's a chance that we're not right, right? But like, there's a risk that we are. There's not no evidence on our side. We have all of our evidence. So, you know, if the status quo is already bad, if there's nothing you like about the status quo, why not take a risk? Uh, so what would I like to see this next speaker do? Because I haven't seen the debate this far in. Am I still recording? Whoops. Allegedly. Allegedly. What would I like to see this second speaker for the affirmative do? I would like to, to see the second speaker come up and argue that, well, what I would really like is for them to respond to the speech we just heard, but I know that that's not common in public forum. I'd like to see extensions, but I know that's also not common in public forums, so I guess we're coming up and refuting the first negative speech now. Which, for the record, we heard three speeches ago. But, um, what I would like to hear from Boy in Red Sweater uh, is just analysis that says you the status quo is bad 
right? Like call into question like how the status quo is going to resolve for any of the stuff that they're talking about, right? Like terrorism, right? Like how is Catalonia tangibly better off from terror attacks in the future, especially since you say that in the status quo it's a hotbed for terrorism. Uh, and then at that point, like, it should be a relatively easy enough job to come up and extend the story of, like, look, if you believe nothing else in this debate, believe that you can probably, probably, probably win, like, look, oh, the other thing I'd like to hear, boy in red sweater, or is that jacket, I don't know, um, argue is that a lot of your evidence is just fundamentally misconstrued in this case because you don't understand the difference between a secession and being granted independence. And that basically calls into question your entire advocacy and whether you're using any of your evidence, right? And I would go through bit by bit, this evidence does not apply. And that would take a lot of ammunition away from the negative, it would take a lot of the like economic problems caused by secession out. It would take a lot of the uh, international conflict caused by secession out. And at that point, it just seems to be that they have less to weigh against this potential military tension in the Mediterranean. Shocker. Probably shouldn't be making things up. Probably if the evidence doesn't say it's going to decrease trade, I don't want a high school kid's analysis that, based on this evidence, that means it'll increase trade. Like, there's a research-based format. Find the evidence that says that, or don't argue it in public forums. Parley's great. I love Parley. Sounds like you should do Parley, right? Be like, here's what I think will happen. Great. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't understand going into an evidentiary format of debate and not having the basic premise, your entire link scenario, supported by any evidence. What are you talking about? You understand what fl flowing is I write it on a piece of paper. Where do you want me to write it? So I, I get you're like, uh, it does these three things. Like, wh where do you care where I write it? Sounds like you care because you're telling me where to write it. So then where should I write it? You gave me three options. What, do I write it three times? Thanks. Yeah, Could have just said it's an you. overview. I'll like. Yeah, and then I'll be going back down our case and I'll sign the one play. Okay. okay, so it sounds like he is making yeah, extensions. Yeah. 
Yes. Looks like preparing. They look like they're getting prepared. No one in this room has ever run a tournament before. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're done with secession? So, yeah, you read n what sounds like new evidence. You didn't even extend your partner's evidence about why secession's inevitable, which should be damning, right? Like, you should be coming up and saying, this got conceded. Instead, you're introducing new evidence, which now has to be conceded again for it to be treated as true where you had all of this evidence hopefully on your flow that you could just extend if you knew what the evidence said right like maybe those were extensions but you need to make that clear that i don't remember i'm not flowing i don't know the names of these writers like explain that they were dropped explain what that indicates and why the cards they read are non-responsive a b how are you not making the distinction between the secession evidence, the secession that is the affirmative's argument that the AF is inevitable? Because the reason I think they're arguing the AF is inevitable is because they've so far made no attempt to create a distinction between the, the way the NEG talks about secession being bad and the secession that the secession that the AF advocates for. There's some strategy in saying that the AF is inevitable, not as contention one, because it doesn't give you any offense. It's purely defensive. Okay, we're moving on to terrorism. So you're talking about Catalan extremists? Like these terrorists we've been talking about are pro-Catalonian what? Like 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 Catalonian separatists are the terrorists we're talking about? We're not talking about like you know Boko Haram. Like, probably something that should be clarified in the debate. Also, you talk about... It like, the first response sounded like it was inching towards this, but, like, just explain 
the status quo is that it's a terrorist hotbed. How The status quo is not resolving for this. The negative has painted a very clear, easy target by only defending the status quo and not arguing that the status quo is good. By winning that the status quo is bad, you get a huge advantage to, you basically get a huge leeway to take whatever risk you need for a chance of resolving some of the problems. Because worst case scenario, it stays as bad as it is. And it seems instead that what happened is they're like, well, what if they say terrorism? And then they just found more cards that said whatever the opposite of terrorism was. Or that terrorism's non-unique. I don't, I don't know. They're not refuting each other's evidence is the problem. There's not currently international companies in Catalonia. What? Let's hear that again, but it just sounded like you read generic evidence of like a market. Cool. It would need a substantial amount of good goods and investment. Well, like, unless they become independent, the people in Catalonia won't spend money or need to eat. Barcelona is a major city. Like, do they, these people know where Catalonia is? Have they seen, like, a picture of Barcelona? There's not, tr there's not trade or investment in internationally in Barcelona. The... One of the major tourist hotspots in, like, mainland Europe? What? Like, I'm not... I don't doubt that the evidence you're reading made a salient point. I doubt it a little. But... It's fully possible, but just explain what, like, read the warrant. Tell me one story, or two, or three, maybe. But when every single card is a completely new line of argumentation, nothing is building on anything, nothing is setting up for another card, or, you know, like, explaining the implications of the previous card, and the speeches are four minutes long, I don't have a problem keeping up with the spreading, but the warranting just isn't there. Like, wh what is the status quo of international investment in Barcelona? Neither neither side has said that. Like, n neither team tells me, like, here is what the economy of Catalonia looks like right now. So that I can understand that when we're talking about investment and ports and all of that stuff, like... You just give me directionality, but where are we start? What's our starting point? So this was what um, his partner was setting up for when it was like, who owns the debt? And they're like, Spain. She's like, great. So yeah, the argument is Spain's giving it to giving them its independence. They can negotiate that and figure it out. Okay, great. Okay, we're moving on. Doesn't need to be in the EU. Sure.
Okay, so, like, he's trying to do a little bit of what we've discussed, right? Just say the status quo is bad, some risk of improvement is better. But there's just so little analysis. There's, like, right now, Spain has military control of the region, so everything else is worse. Or, like, I'm sorry, nothing else is worse. So everything else is better. So anything is going to be better than the status quo. If that argument were true, you would win the debate outright. Why not just make ex make that a contention, expand on it, and explain it so that any judge would have to vote on it? Why every other argument you're going for? Why even talk about the EU? Right? Like, why even talk about the EU? If the status quo of Catalonia is the worst scenario it could be in, why do you even need to talk about how them not being in the EU is not significant, right? Like, wouldn't that entail all of that? Wouldn't that prove it? Like, just seems like trying to cram in as much evidence and not invest too much strategy in any one card and have as many diverse arguments as possible, which just turns the debate into 60 arguments going off at the same time. And what happens then is the team that looks like they're winning is probably going to win. And sure, like it worked out for you here in theory, right? Whoever wins, it worked out for you because the judges thought that you won the debate. But it's just not – that only works – it's not consistent. It's not consistent. And then when you hit a team that isn't intimidated by this, you've had no – you haven't tested your arguments, right? Like by not investing in one of these arguments as your main line of argumentation, what you're failing to do is use the weaker teams you hit as an opportunity where – you're probably going to beat them because they're less experienced, they'll buckle on their cross X, blah, 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 but they may raise some good points about your arguments, which shouldn't be that hard to see if you just fully dedicate to like one or two lines of argumentation and make a really clear story. And the way that works to your advantage is you make a really clear story and then the teams you're better than you'll probably beat anyway, but then you are noticing some flaws. The judges after the round are like, yeah, you won the debate, but here's this concern I have with this case. And you can address that. What happens here is you're only beating people you're better than and you're not really – you're confusing everyone. You're confusing all the judges even though no one wants to admit that they're confused or maybe they don't realize like they're just – yeah, sounds great. That was a lot of evidence. Uh, they don't know what they're looking for. And then the first time you hit someone who's faster than you, like that's it, right? Like they start refuting your evidence like you don't know what to go for. You don't know how to – tell that story how to make the analysis like it's just creating a lot of problems for yourself by having all of these contradictory things going on at the same time population of spain includes catalonia Right, like, that's the other thing, man. Like, what is this stuff where you're, like, trying to, trying to support an independent Catalonia, thus they will not trade with them? Oh, did the evidence say they won't trade with them? No, no, the evidence just said that it doesn't support this independence movement, which is not the F. Okay, so, like, this thing now... Yeah, the population of Spain will implode within 20 years, thus Catalonia will get out, and that avoids the age implosion? Like, how? Like, Catalonia is distinct from this? It's only, like, Madrid that is age imploding? Like, 
these arguments don't have this is why advantage structure is really good and I read something the other day in in public forum people don't label the parts of their arguments They're like just say the argument they want. don't don't call something the uniqueness don't call it a link policy does that parley does that I don't know if LD does it they should everyone should do that because it makes it really obvious to everyone where the gaping hole in your argument is. How do you resolve for this by leaving? What is your internal link scenario? It's just all of these arguments should be their own advantages, but instead they're one card with no solvency, no impact. What is the age? What is the impact of the age explosion, implosion, whatever? Like, where does that rank in terms of important impacts in the round? What do you want me to do with that information other than look at it, my flow at the end of the debate and say, mm, maybe age implosion? Why are you not emphasizing the difference between secession without conflict? You're reading it as like answer to one thing. You need to just slow and and like when you look at like policy or parley teams that spread, like yeah, they're getting a lot of evidence down, but then they stop, they slow down, and they explain a major concept that is going to be really important. So you're going fast and then you're like, look. The entire negative is non-unique at the point where secession is going to happen. So you have to choose as the judge whether you want the secession to be peaceful or violent. And we would argue that peaceful is better. Then you can go fast again. But you need to be ex highlighting, getting the judge to underline this, getting the judge to like have a clear sense of what the truest most important clash here is like boil the debate down start collapsing early like why wasn't this in the first contention Seems like you like split the F. Like these aren't extensions. These are things that should have been said so that now they could be extensions now that the negative has failed to respond to them. And they would be conceded. They'd be true. But you're just coming up and saying it. You're saying it for the first time again. Why? What is this? What is the strategic benefit of that? How does terminal defense outweigh? Like you don't need to use every debate term you've ever heard in the same argument. Does it outweigh? Great. Slow down. Tell me why it outweighs. Tell me why it's the most important impact in the round. Tell me wh how to frame the entire round around the question based on this issue. Don't just tell me it outweighs and is the most important impact in the round. Also, it's terminal defense. Also, let's move on. Right? Like, you're not... Pick what you want the judge to do. They're going to make one decision. They're going to take 30 seconds to do it. Control that time. Control that decision. Tell them how to view the round in a way that is actionable, that they will remember, that they can follow.
your evidence outweighs the that was a turn the turn no longer functions your evidence is your argument doesn't outweigh your argument is conceded you need to explain the implication of ref refutation that was like the one piece of refutation we had this whole not even refutation this was the one instance of refutation that we had where like that's not what that evidence says and you need to sort of explain what that does to the argument what happens now? You're just like, we outweigh. You just keep saying outweigh. What outweighs? What impact were you leading to there that now outweighs? Do you remember? Do you remember why you talked about the ports? Because if I recall, you talked about the ports because of the NATO response time to this scenario that is worse than the cold war now might be a good time to mention that scenario explain that all of the setup for that argument has now been conceded the judge has to believe that that impact happens and then just explain why that's the most important impact but you're not seeing the forest for the trees you're super focused on just this one card and not what the function of the card was not what the function of the argument was where it was leading right like remember that so when we have four step refutation which we haven't made a video on because seems like you know ultra basic you know they say i say therefore or because therefore you're not giving me a therefore you're not giving me like a now that i've refuted this here's what this means for the debate you're just like so we outweigh I don't know what that means. I don't. If I have to make this decision, I don't know what decision this leads me to. Come on, dude. You got to do better than I don't know why it doesn't matter. Come on. What do you mean you don't know why? It's the premise of one of your contentions. You didn't you didn't Google it? You're like, oh, take it from me. NATO is correct that Morocco is not a threat, but I have one article that says Spain's scared. I didn't read it. I don't know why they're scared, but I know that their best defense is land troops. Again, there's no land border. Didn't read the evidence. But, yeah, it doesn't matter. Vote for me. Got to do better than that. Infrastructure gap. Uh, remember that um, there's, they, they have every incentive to spend on uh, uh, infrastructure. They drop the analysis that says when you spend money on infrastructure, you actually get a return on investment. So if they're worried about the economy, it makes logical sense that they're going to spend more. That's just, like, uh, that's just easy. Then China evidence never actually says that China's going to stop trade. That's just an analytic. They don't actually do that. Then on the Mediterranean chart, that doesn't matter. Because it's just about the Why don't they do that? Don't say it's just an analytic. Don't listen to it. Because here's my analytic, right? Like, you gotta have better evidence to counter bad evidence. If you even had a strong uniqueness scenario and you're like, here is my thing that just straight up says their international trade will be fine. This piece of evidence. And it'd be like, all they have is analytics. We have this piece of evidence that says blah, blah, blah. But like, just giving analytic, like, they would do this. No, they wouldn't. They would do the opposite. It's just wash. It's like there's. It's just a wash all over the place. This debate is just like seventy pieces of argumentation, and it's just like wash, wash, analytic, analytic. Like it's an evidentiary format of debate. You should know what your evidence says, and then you should focus on using your evidence as a reason why you're right. Like why am I not seeing this? I don't know if I'm getting grouchy or something because it's early or I'm hungry. I had some corn dogs. Oh, maybe they need to settle in. I do like corn dogs a lot. I've decided like this week. Somebody was eating a popsicle and they're like, I have a way better idea. Okay. We're back. After this, I don't know, there's 20 minutes left, but hopefully it'll go faster.
Yeah, don't sit down and talk with your partner and whatever. Like, your speed is up. Cross is next. gonna be a really long video but uh, that's what what's his name on it I'm gonna get some water Take forever to share evidence. How is PF so bad with every aspect of evidence? Sharing it, reading it, re reading it, reading the article, knowing why, cutting it. You would think it's like, welcome to public forums. Here's how you do research. Here's how you cut evidence. Here's how you share evidence. What else are they starting with? What? Did you just ask him why? <laughs> you say that the only long-term solution is secession. And did, he, did he say why and then catch himself? Do, do you want to know why? Oh, so he's like, do you want me to explain that? No. Hopefully, the, the debater on the right um, seems more experienced than his partner. I'm anticipating that uh, he will handle cross X a little bit better. The one on the left seems to have a lot of momentum. He's feeling hyped up. Um, I don't know. I don't know how this will go, but I suspect that the debater on the right will do well because... The debater on the left was sort of all over the goddamn place. And, um... Yeah. So, here's my question on that. Like, they've had secessionist dreams for how long now, right? Quite some time, right? So, let's talk about, like, these secessionist dreams, right? And every single time that they boil to, like, a tennis point, what happens? They try what your advocacy is. Right. They so try the secession and bring tensions back down. And what happens right. after that? Like, I would tell you No, you can't finish explaining. Why are you letting him tell? You need to ask your question in a concise way. The pro that was a great argument, right? But you didn't ask the question in a simple way that sets up a scripted answer for him to give, right? You were like, you start explaining your argument halfway through. That's like, so what happens? And they're like, you know, instead of asking, so what happens? Be like. Was there a violent secession in the 1970s? And then once I say no, you say thanks. That's all I needed. Now I have to listen to an analysis on a frozen pendulum? You understand a pendulum loses momentum. Pendulums don't, like, start at a given height, swing, and then go, like, whoop! Like, <laughs> that was the that was the swing that did it. Now we're off the rails, worse than we've ever been before. Maybe a bad analogy. This is the first time that Spain ever invoked Article 155. What, like, Tier says is that these short-term solutions are just delaying the inevitable, Two questions. A, 
ask a fucking question, kid. Two questions first. That's talking about unilateral. Like, what is the question? Right. This is my like. That's not a question. Yeah, because when, cause when you're asking him, hey, are you wrong? He's not going to say, yeah, yeah, let me tell you all the reasons why my argument's right. It's like, you have the card. Why, why is this first coming up in the second cross X? This should have... You were the second team to speak. This should have been in speech two, not in what is essentially speech six. Oh my lord, dude. If you have... Ask a good question. Like, what is this? We're gonna... We're gonna now talk about the guns talk... Are you asking a question or making an argument? Like, whose question is it right now? I think it's, you know, kid who works at Target. Ask a good question and then let him answer. And probably hurt himself in the process your your question requires that once they start answering you say wait hold on let's talk about the gun topic No, no, moving on. We spent a lot of time on this. You fucked up, kid. You had an opportunity to, like, bring this up in any of the last speeches. You could have asked a much more gotcha question. But instead you decided to, like, wax poetic about the gun topic and durable fiat. And no, if I'm the other guy, they're like, dude, you got 40 seconds on this. I'm not going to. You missed your chance. I'm going to move on. I don't know why he did that. How does that interact with the idea that like unilateral secession won't lead to violence if you put a limit? The defense on our case, how does that ninety percent probability card interact with the defense on our C one? Like specifically on the impact level? Like you say war isn't likely, but then you also say that in unilateral secession there's a ninety percent chance of war. After secession, tensions between the host state of the original state and like the new state. Sweet, that's what it's like lying, is it you or the card? What are you talking about? What is the what is the inconsistency? He says in the status quo, the chance of violence is low. If there is a secession, the chance of violence is high. Now, the problem is that his interpretation of secession is unilateral and that's not what your card talks about. But your gotcha question is not like how does that work? You say conflict won't happen, and then you also say it will happen. He's saying it won't happen in the status quo, it will happen in the world of the F. I think, I think the debater on the right is winning this cross X. I mean, I think the debater on the, on the right, on the left thinks he's winning it, or hopes he's winning it, or is trying to push really hard. I don't think it's going well for him. I don't think you have to be like that experienced a debate judge to sort of see like he sounds like he knows what he's talking about, but the problems he's trying to point out just functionally aren't really problems. Really? You cut off his answer to the question? that you insisted he take instead of being able to ask you a question? 
Come on, dude. What would Spot the Target Dog think? I'm sorry, he's wearing, he's wearing red and khakis. Like. I have no idea how long I've been recording this. Could be 30 minutes. Well, it can't be 30 minutes because we're 20 minutes into the video. We're on hour three? I don't know. Why am I doing this for someone named the AIDS blender? God damn it, you better be watching this. This video is like five hours long. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna make you take no. I'm gonna want to see your notes. I want a video of you watching all five hours of this analysis you asked me to do. Jesus Christ. Okay, here comes the two minute speeches. Spend 30 seconds of your two minutes on overview. What do I mean kind of generic on your side? You need to be extending one issue you're going to win. You're going to blanket cover your side and then what, like, target three of their arguments without any idea of what they're going to collapse down to? Why would you say negotiations are solving in either world? I don't understand. If negotiations solve in the AF world, then the AF is good. And you say, like, remember that they're solving. Like, your partner didn't extend that. It hasn't. You you can't treat that like it's true. You you have to explain that it was dropped, and why it wasn't responded to. Spanish nationalists are going to fight Catalonia on the border because because they love Spain and they don't like that Spain gave land away. What does that mean? How does that what like fight them with what? Like the Catalonian government versus Esteban, the, the, the Spanish man who was mad that the shape of the country changed? Like, who's he fight? Does he have a military with him? Does he have, like, are these the Spanish terrorists now? Like, wh what is this scenario you're trying to sell me on? And this is what happens later in the debate, right? Inevitably, you have to start focusing down on these 
few single issues that you want me to, to believe and vote on, but they had so little development early in the debate that they just make no sense. And it's just very much up to the judge at this point at like how they imagine the scenario to go and whether they believe it or they don't believe it. And that's how you end up with unpredictable decisions. The analytics is that they won't like Catalonia because they didn't support unilateral secession, not bilateral granting them the... I've made that point, hopefully. Now we're back up to 41% supporting it instead of 20% supporting it. Okay, 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 okay. What are all of these new links? You said, do you remember at the end of the speech where you're like, balkanization, that's bad. One, why does that delegitimize the EU? Two, what is the impact of that happening? It's like, yeah, what's what Russia wants, but like, what happens? How does the story end? Tell me what I would see in the world, right? I wake up tomorrow and... The Iberian Peninsula is balkanized. It's Iberianized now, they're going to call it. that. It set the new trend. How is my life or anyone else's life tangibly different? I need to know the answer to that question in order for this to have an impact. Basque are also in Spain. Which probably should have been its own contention with other independence movements now being charged up. This one was peaceful. Maybe the other ones won't be. Seems like an entire contention that probably would have been good. I'm skipping through this before I kill myself. Come on, girl with glasses. You got this. You don't need prep. You did pretty good last time. Bro, I don't need your anal- Is it a road map or is it the overview? Well, she's she's the first person in this debate to be doing what she's supposed to be doing in a given speech and she did good in cross x i would venture a guess that say overall she's the best debater in this debate right remember when you're reading like several pieces to something like you're hoping they get dropped so that you can use it as concessions to prove that something happens and then that thing ideally has an impact that fucking matters right where is the negative on this 
right? Where are they saying, here's the things you dropped, here's why that means you're wrong? They can't do that because they're defending the status quo, which they say is bad. Their story is just too complicated to do that with. gotta do better than that though yeah you're gonna give a people independent like how is the negative not mentioning as a major point that the majority of catalonia doesn't speak catalan they're not catalan they're just working there right that's like if you go to la for work from san francisco and then they're like, now we're the country of Los Angeles. It's like, well, I don't want this, right? Like, what would you stay there? Like, what? You're going to give a country independence not because they want it now, but because you think they'll want it in 20 years when the age implosion happens? Come on. They didn't adequately respond to that thing that got introduced at the end of the last cross X. But also, how do you resolve for that? You're telling me that every conflict eventually erupts into war, except the conflict between the far right and the far left of Catalonia that have nothing in common. That's not going to erupt into war because they're going to want to stay in power. Give it 20 years, still safe, right? But every other conflict, it's been ebbing and flowing since the 70s, but imminently or in 20 years, it will disrupt into war. Every, every secession conflict will end in secession. That's it for the South, then. Uh, in, in Northern California, far north of me, uh, we have the state of Jefferson, which is like Chico and the surrounding, you know, poor as shit towns who don't have water wanting to like that's inevitably going to succeed too can't can't wait T 20 years right tops age implosion which is the analysis that you should have given in your first speech first sentence of your first speech Who are already there. Also, like, I don't understand. Safe haven for terrorists? Like, what does that mean? Like, these terrorists are currently in Italy, and they're not safe there. <laughs> they're thinking, fuck, I gotta get out. They're like these Portuguese terrorists. And they're like, where am I gonna go? They're about to catch me. And then the... The... The, the 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 Catalonian conflict happens and they're like Barcelona is going to be my new home they get all their terrorist friends and they're like yo we're going to Barcelona where the streets are paved with fucking rocket launchers and black flags with white text on them
That's not your biggest impact. What are you talking about is the biggest impact in the round? What happened to the, well, you know, weakness is not the right word. They need the better response time. Whatever, I'm shitting on this speech, but all in all, she did her job better than anyone else has done their job. Okay, oh god, I forgot about the worst. Who thought of Grand Cross? Even the television show Crossfire didn't descend into this level of a shit show. No, no, no. You should say, when will this happen? Right? Like, like how long do conflicts ebb and flow? Because it doesn't have to be this conflict. It's like every separatist conflict ebbs and flows until blah, blah, blah. Right? Um, how long have the Kurds been trying to be separatist? What about the South, right? Like, should should we be, like, that was 1862, right? Like, why is the time frame for Catalonia any fucking day now? But they, and they're like, the only real time frame argument they read is like, in 20 years they'll want to because of the age implosion. So really, like, it's not this pendulum thing that's controlling the time frame. It's this age implosion thing controlling it. Because you have no analysis that says we should expect this inevitable separatist movement any time in our fucking lifetimes. This is what happens when you all read your own evidence and don't respond to your opponent's evidence. Now you've both conceded the 24% and the 70% number, and it is a shit show. fuck did you just say to me target kid non-predictive evidence doesn't matter in debate you're right the only thing that matters is what someone imagined could possibly happen looking at things right now why could that possibly matter the only thing we objectively know to be true what could possibly be the value of looking at that let's look at what your fucking wonky ass evidence made up on the spot and your ice pendulum that <laughs> God damn it. Why do people do this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Like, this has been a frozen conflict. Wars happen six times. Like, I can't quantify, like, like 12 tensions, like, how much it takes for there to be a bright line. But, like, historically, it's been a frozen conflict. Like, okay, well, like, 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 at best, your impact of this is, like, very long term. No. It probably, well, I mean, you drop the span. See, now, see, that's the only answer they have, right? So it's like, so it's long term. It's like, no, 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 because you drop age implosion. Yeah, so basically the warrant is that Spain has an aging population, in 20 years 
She's the only one that has any idea what she's doing. She's like, yeah, nope, you're right. Our entire offense is predicated on this shitty argument, and I'm going to burn all of Cross X time explaining it again, and then when you try to say it in your speech, we'll come up and say that was late analysis because it was conceded. It wasn't said earlier this was, if anything, it was a double drop, but... Oh, now there's a difference between secession and granting them independence. Not the first speech you had on the app to explain this. Like, now it matters. Yeah, I mean, way to come up with this turn in Grand Crossfire, but that's what happens when there's 90 arguments and four minutes to talk about them. Dropping an album at the end of the summer. funny how well they understand this card but how little they understand the Spain fears Morocco card target kid you're burning a bridge with me man The like, uh, that like, kind of, come on. This doesn't make you look confident. Doesn't, it's not a good look. It's not a good look. Okay, so you do know what collapsing is. You just have no idea how to set up for it. Like, decreasing the ability 
Alright, maybe this kid's the best. Um. Okay, yes, in this speech, this, this kid does his job. He does what he's supposed to do. Some things I want to point out, right, is that the entire debate, your entire neg case, everything you've said is strategically building to this speech. A lot of what he said is brand new. They're the right turns, they're the right analysis. Who knows how long I've been making this video. If I were on hour six, I said the same stuff four hours ago. If we're on hour two, I guess it was like 40 minutes ago. I don't know. But the point is, all of this stuff I pointed out a long time ago, and he should have been able to say that earlier. Why didn't he say that earlier? Because he's distracted by a lot of shit that doesn't matter. Um, and a lot of stuff that served no role in this last speech. Let's try to cover some of it. Terrorism, never mentioned. Safe haven, safe haven, not safe haven. Uh, Spanish uh, extremists, nationalists, or the, you know, whatever, didn't come up. China, doesn't matter. No fucking mention, right? Uh, investment, never comes up. Uh, the ports, doesn't matter. Uh Jeez, uh, NATO, Morocco, none of this stuff ends up mattering, right? And you just need round vision. You just need round vision. You need to be able to anticipate as early as possible what you think this last speech is going to look like. Not in the 90 seconds of prep before you start the speech, right? You need to envision what you are going to go for. Envisioning that gets a lot easier when you have a simpler advocacy that gives you fewer routes into winning. Now, a lot of this is turns, which might be why this video was picked. And if this is a well-known case or well-known debate, it might be well-known because it's sort of like a save that in the last minute situation. I don't know. It depends on what the other uh, team's going to do. But... A lot of this would have been a lot easier to do earlier in the debate by having a stronger advocacy, simpler stories, fewer stories, a beginning, middle, and end, meaning, you know, uniqueness link, internal link, clear impacts, and then that just frees you up into, like, seeing what your opponent is saying and how you can use that rather than all this other stuff. If I was the other team, I'd talk about that argument coming too late which it sounds like we're already going to get anyway from the gentleman sitting the farthest on the left but um it's unclear to me what the AF is going to go for now right the AF is already largely collapsed right um and they've dug themselves into a major hole because they're like, well, their main argument that they have to, that they've, unless they're going to now go for the, the thing, you remember when I was like, that's not your biggest impact. Unless they decide now they're going to just switch trains and go for the actual like naval warfare, NATO response time bullshit that got dropped. That was their factually biggest impact, right? The miscalculation of all that got dropped. Unless you want to bring that up now, which, yikes, um, you have to go for this analysis that the secession is inevitable, which, you know, child standing up right now has made a decent enough analysis that even if you buy the secession is inevitable, Spurring it only makes the next secession movement uh, inevitable within it, right? You're not, like, mitigating the conflict whatsoever. You're just allowing for conflict to exist. So if that conflict's going to exist anyway, we probably don't want to create a civil war sooner than later. So it's a question of time frame now, right? They say, we don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen in 20 years. 
in the world of the neg, right? At the point where you say 20 years at the most, you've said 20 years. Like, you don't get to now defend, but it could happen sooner. You said 20 years, that's what you're going to be held to. So as a judge, I now have the decision to make between, well, do I wait and let this conflict happen inevitably in 20 years, where inevitably some dude's frozen pendulum says that it's going to, the AF is going to happen, but violently then? Or do I go for this give them independence now thing with this dropped analysis with a turn linking into it where the AF has now created the link where, for the record, I pointed it out, um, that, yeah, the left and right separatist movements are going to have their own frozen conflict with pendulum-like effects, which will create civil war probably on a much faster than 20-year time scale. So, yikes. I think the AF is going to go really, really hard for there's a difference between unilateral secession and multilateral secession, bilateral se separation, which you should have done in the beginning because I told you right away it was going to matter. They're going to go for this I mean, I don't know what else they can go for. They can, they have to try to de-link that the Civil War is going to happen if they split. Because of the difference in secession. And then they have to say, who cares about the age implosion in 20 years? Like, I, I think they probably pick up a judge on the difference in secession. But if I had to guess right now which is the side that wins, I'd guess probably the team on the right. But let's find out. But it's also really hard to tell because um, while that speech was really solid and controlled a lot of confidence and all that stuff, um, the girl on the left is also good. And... The, the the cross X, that first cross X was really damning. And even now, uh, white child on the right is sending a lot of I think we lost signals. So I don't know how big an impact that would have on a panel like whatever they have. So this should be pretty straightforward. It's going to be two extended turns. Actually, yeah, just one turn. All of this would have been true if you didn't bring up the analysis they now got to use to say that there's conflict, right? You say every piece of separatist conflict leads to war. Why would you do that? Now that got used against you, right? Like, probably not a good strategy. Should have mentioned all of this way, 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 way sooner. Because then they would have had to respond to this. You explain why the response is insufficient and blah, blah, blah. And now you're just trying to have this distinction way late. This should have come up way in your first four-minute speech or in your second four-minute speech. Now it's, in my book, I mean, I guess they convinced one judge with it, but in my book, it's too late. Because, one, you should have talked about it sooner, but two, even if that is true, there's no analysis for why your conflicts inevitably lead to war argument doesn't apply to this. 
also a reason why you need simpler stories with less moving parts because then you end up contradicting yourself way less. It becomes way easier to think, what is my story in this debate before you say anything so that you know you're not contradicting it. You don't prevent the Spain collapse, right? Like, this would be a winning argument if Catalonian separation, uh, separation, separation avoided it, but you just say Spain's going to collapse and Catalonia should separate, and that does something, right? Like, is Catalonia immune from this? Like, it's just some part of Spain, something to do with that region like why wouldn't anyway doesn't get my vote even more to its offense for us because if you affirm now catalonia gets out so the comparative weighing is clear you vote affirmative pretty cleanly on a risk of offense what tier finds is that only a permanent solution can prevent live violence in the long term at best even if they have like at best and our offense outweighs theirs because we actually have solvency for theirs which goes uncontested even more so finding this important... i don't believe you have solvency They say that it is the Civil War. They're talking about the same Civil War. At the end of the day, though, realize that all of their evidence is talking about... And so did your partner. You said the conflicts we're talking about are the same one. Whether it's between the two lands or within one whole Spain, that's the war. That's the people fighting, right? Like, that. what's the difference? That's It's the same. It's... No. It's the same. Shit. too late in my book it's way too late you can't bring up this analysis in the last speech when they have no chance to respond especially when so for me it's like when did you have the first opportunity to make the argument right you had the opportunity to say all of this shit in the first half speech i think it's too late for me to let you make it now because they haven't had a chance to respond to it Okay, what do I think of this round? Let's see, can I make this bigger? There we go. All right. I think this is what happens when you have skill and dedication and hard work and talent, but very little in terms of strategic vision I think the debate was really messy from the beginning I think I had immediate concerns which both teams took 40 minutes to realize or at least see the significance of is there a lesson to take away from it yeah I think I have way fewer arguments and mm -hmm. Have your arguments work in conjunction. Tell one story, maximum two stories, with the second one not even really mattering, right? Like, the way I write a case, or the way Paul writes a case, is you have your first contention, which is the one that is your real offense in the round that you are planning to win. And then the second one is basically trying to capture whatever you think they're going to say. So if it's this topic and you're the AF and you're like, they should be independent because, I don't know, it avoids conflict. And then if you think they're going to go for economic collapse, you then have a second contention about how this actually improves their economy. The whole purpose of the second contention isn't for you to win on it at the end of the debate. The purpose of it f is for it to take the wind out of their sails, make it a little bit more of a wash scenario. 
make it so that the judge is like, well, you know, on this issue, I could go really either way, but on this first staff contention, like, that is very clearly just going for the affirmative, so I'm going to look at this instead of the other one. Um, that, I think, is a much cleaner strategy, and then you can use cards that tell a story, and when it's a lot easier to remember what your advocacy is, there's way less that can be used against you, right? I think the negative wins this debate. Maybe they didn't. I can go back and look at how the decision was made. It's a 2-1 either way, so it was close, and the teams could have done a lot more to make it a cleaner decision for the judges, but with all of that having been said, I think that the lesson to take away is that more isn't always better in a format like Lincoln or like public forum. There's not enough time to pursue all of these different routes. You throw up all these arguments and they end up doing nothing for you. If you go back and look at that cross X and try to look at how much cross X time was used in benefit of an argument that either side goes for at the end, very little. We got a lot on China and Morocco and all this other stuff that they should have known wasn't going to matter because they should have known what their main piece of offense was. Do I get a vote and who wins? I would say the negative team wins. I would say that the last negative speech was the best speech in the debate. I would say that the second last, second to last uh, AF speech was pretty good. That girl also did a pretty good job. She didn't go for the offense that I would have gone for, which was this response time in the Mediterranean argument. That was conceded and clearly a bigger impact. And it would have been it wouldn't have been susceptible to this turn that came from the negative later, right? You could say like. Look, who the fuck cares? Like, either way, the Spanish people are going to fight each other, right? But in one scenario, we have a port, and I don't know. You'd have to win the argument that the port wasn't being funded, right? Like, which it sounds like it was, but then, like, why is that in your case to begin with? How do you not know that about your own argument? So it's hard for me to put myself in the shoes of these debaters because, like, I would have to imagine that I have bad evidence. Like, why, why would you? Why? And why would you not be able to explain this Morocco scenario in any way? Why is that argument in there? And that, that paints my decision a lot also. I think when I'm a judge, I'm, I know which team I want to win. I think every judge does, and if they don't, they're either a way better person than I am, or not experienced enough. But I think every judge, or just lying, probably more, I think even if you're not experienced, you know which side you want to win. So then it becomes, I want this team to win, what is my excuse for letting them win? Or I want this team to lose, and what is my excuse for them losing? Which is probably more the case here. Um, and if I was judging this round, the decision would come down to, look, the affirmative just has a worse case at their own fault. They have the only evidence in the debate that just straight up is refuted, which is like, no, the ports are being funded. Um, they aren't able to defend or explain their own analysis about this Morocco, NATO, Spain thing, which was the impact for their entire second contention. And then the main thing they're going for is something they brought up in the second cross X. As, uh, as Spike Lee would say, nah, son. Ha! Uh watching a lot of Spike Lee's masterclass. On the other hand, I think the negative mishandles a lot of stuff, but they came in with a case that was internally somewhat consistent. Uh, but really, it's just the affirmative lost the debate. It's not that the negative won or did a really good job. With that said, the turns and analysis and all that stuff that 
I was screaming in my head, and that's another huge part of, like, what I hope you're taking away from this right now isn't, like, how would this asshole view the round, which is, okay, if the real issue is the judge wants one side to win and wants an excuse to vote for them, how do I control the judge wanting me to win and giving them the excuse to vote for me? If you can do those two things, that's it. You win rounds. A huge part of that is the judge watching the round, especially if they have debate experience, is screaming certain things in their head. They're, they're like, obviously hate some arguments. They obviously see some flaws. They obviously really like some other arguments. And a huge aspect of being good at debate is watching the judge and trying to figure out, read their philosophy, look at them, stare at them in the round and try to determine which arguments do they like, which arguments do they not like, and navigate towards what you think they want to hear. Just tell the judge what you think they want to hear in order to vote for you. Because halfway through the round, they have certain arguments that they just, if you say it, they're ready, especially in those last speeches. When I'm watching the last speeches, there's usually a sentence I want you to say out loud because it's my RFD. And if you say it, then I can write it, circle it, sign the ballot, and be done. And in this case, the negative team did that for me. I had something I'd said earlier in the debate. This is what I want them to say. I said plenty of the same stuff for the affirmative. I want you to say this. And um, the negative came up and said it. The affirmative didn't. That gets my vote. All in all, hopefully there's some lessons in there about um, case construction and cross X and refutation but I understand that this is a format of debate that doesn't really emphasize those things as much as other stuff I'm sure there's a lot of nuanced analysis another coach or analyzer could give about the way they were dressed or the way they spoke or all of these little nuances that I may not know about because I don't have a lot of public forum experience uh, and they may know a lot about it. and these kids who I guess all went to the same camp maybe or three of them went to the same camp seem to have a lot of the same laptop stickers like maybe that's the stuff that they were trained for and they excel in and the reason why they beat their other opponents and I just sort of lack the context to understand that but um, so while I seem frustrated I don't want to give the impression that I think either team is untalented it's just one of those like let me coach you and in one week make you a better debate team but i guess that's sort of the the premise of what this channel is so um hope you enjoyed that hope this all recorded and uh see you next time